Leaders in business joined together, and employees did too. They created labor unions in response to corporate mergers. Many laborers endured risky working conditions and long hours with meager pay. There was no time off for sick days or vacation. The working conditions for women, kids, and sweatshop employees were particularly brutal. They received the lowest pay as well. An early labor union established in 1866 was the National Labor Union NLU. It convinced Congress to establish an eight-hour workday for government employees two years later. African-American employees who formed the Colored National Labor Union were not included in the NLU CNLU. The Knights of Labor also had success, but they started to wane following a string of failed strikes. As more employees joined unions, such organizations were able to secure some perks for their members. Collective bargaining, in which labor and management negotiate to get greater salaries and shorter work weeks, was used by union leaders. The workers might go on strike if the discussions fall through. As unions gained strength, they started to have an impact on politics. Labor-friendly legislation was attempted by some politicians, while unions contributed funds for their preferred candidates. Two significant union types saw significant progress. Craft unions were one. The American Federation of Labor AFL, was founded in 1886 by Samuel Gompers. Strikes and collective bargaining were employed by Gompers. Industrial unionism, or a union of all employees, skilled and unskilled, in a single industry, was a philosophy held by Eugene V. Debs. The American Railway Union was founded by him ARU. Debs adopted socialism together with other workers. An organization known as the Industrial Workers of the World IWW, often known as the Wobblies, was founded in 1905 by socialists and radicals. Japanese and Mexican farm laborers established a union in the West to better working conditions. Strikes were used by unions to try to change the situation. The Baltimore and Ohio Railroad's employees went on strike in 1877 over lower pay. Most freight trains and some passenger trains were stopped for more than a week due to the Great Strike of 1877. Federal troops broke up the strike. Later attacks were violent. In 1886, the Haymarket Affair occurred. At a protest in Chicago's Haymarket Square in favor of striking workers, a bomb detonated. There were several fatalities. Nobody knows who put off the bomb, but labor leaders were accused of inciting a riot and four were hung. When the manager of a steel mill in Homestead, Pennsylvania, close to Pittsburgh, announced that pay would be lowered, steel workers were furious. Workers declared a strike and engaged Pinkerton guards in combat that resulted in fatalities on both sides. This strike was the Homestead strike. Two years later, a strike was called against the Pullman Company because to the mass layoffs and wage cuts. The American Railway Union strike, which was led by Eugene Debs, descended into violence, necessitating the dispatch of federal troops to put an end to it. Most unions forbade women from joining, but they came together behind Mother Jones and other leaders. She was a United Mine Workers organizer who helped change the law on child labor by exposing mistreatment of young workers. A tragic event in 1911 brought to light the appalling working conditions in industries. A fire broke out in the Triangle Shirtwaist Factory in New York. The majority of the female employees could not leave since all but one door had been locked by the employer. Despite widespread indignation, factory owners were never held accountable. Businesses dreaded unions as they grew in power. They also hired inmates to work for them in an effort to prevent workers from joining unions. The administration received assistance. Even federal legislation, the Sherman Antitrust Act, was applied by the courts against the workers. The government would put an end to the labor action if a company merely claimed that a strike would hurt interstate commerce. None of these steps, however, prevented unions from expanding.